Hi, I'm Ayofel Larende. I'm a visual artist and a photographer, but I major mainly in scribble arts, which I see um, as an art form born out of um, frustration. My very first scribble painting was done based on frustration. I was at Artist Connect in 2015, where I was challenged to actually do an art piece. and. I felt really frustrated because around that time I was just using pencil to work and I was handed a pen to draw. So I just started doing jaga jaga trying to find something from it and then along the line I realized I was actually just making sense. I was I could see a face in the painting I was doing. So um, I realized that there was something called scribble arts later on when I researched on what I had done at the Artist Connect. Scribble art basically, like I said, is an art, um, is an art form born out of um, frustration and me wanting to accept myself, me just accepting my flaws and me also creating sense out of nonsense and using um, this harmony to actually form harmony. So it's more of like me joining crooked lines together to actually make sense. It's just wobbling lines around to actually form, to actually form something, to actually um, arrive at a point. I can remember far back as um, secondary school in SS1. Um, I was in biology, um, I was a science student in biology class then. I needed to like make some extra money for pocket, for pocket money. I was in the boarding house then and um, I could draw from my textbook. I could imitate things I could see. So my friends used to give me their works, biology assignments to draw skeletons and everything. So like most times whenever we have assignments, I'm the one they come to. So I used to do it and then I got into trouble. The, Biology teacher caught me, realized that all the works were looking alike, and then she called me to the staff um, staff room. Around the, around that time, the visual arts teacher too was around, so like he saw what was going on and he was like, "Ah, this girl can draw. She can even shade. Okay, she should actually come around to the visual arts um, class." So I enrolled for the visual arts vocational studies. Then I was doing science and I was also doing art on the side. So I started developing interest because art to me was just for fun. I didn't really know that I had the gift. I just knew that okay, I could just draw. Things and I realized that most of the times when I draw, it was basically from what I was feeling at that time or basically because I just wanted to feel good. So yeah, that was basically how I started doing art. Initially, my inspiration basically was only from myself. I was inspired by my own journey through life, but along the line, I started getting more interest in things around me. I started getting more interest in history, I gained more interest in env my environment, I gained interest in my friends, like their stories, and um, yeah, governments too. I get interested, I'm, I'm interested in politics, the political aspect of um, Nigeria and the world as a whole. Okay, first of, I think being an artist first is an achievement for me because people are destined, people are people, people are born for greatness, yes, and people are, have been given different skills. Some people do hairdressing, some people do makeup, some people dance and all of that, but I'm really thankful to God for this gift that I have, um, which is art. So I see that as an achievement because it consoles me, fuels me up. And then secondly, I've, um, I was nominated for the Future Awards. Um, Africa last year, which was very, very surprising because I was nominated beside the people I see as my bosses. 
So like being around those people and being the youngest amongst them was quite overwhelming. And then I got I got some other nominations from um, Leading Women's Africa. I was one out of 100 Leading Women's Africa, most inspiring women in the world. So like, that's like the major highlights for like the awards I've won. There's also the one for creativity, most creative students in the whole of Unilag. There's one for most creative students in Africa. And yeah. Weirdly, I actually don't even count the number of artworks, but I have a list which I used to collate them. But I would say, in my lifetime, in my lifetime, I would say that I've created more than 500 works. I dance, before I started doing art, I used to dance. Actually, dancing was my first love. I used to dance professionally, but I had to stop because my parents didn't find it, they didn't see it as a career as much as also the way they didn't see art as a career. So I had to just stop dancing, but it's something that I still wish to go back. And aside dancing, I also am a photographer. I take pictures, I also do short films. Scribble art is something that I have mastered over time. It's something that I've practiced, practiced, practiced. Something that I can even do in my sleep, not even exaggerate. So like most times it's really not difficult because I'm the kind of person who sees or who gains inspiration from dreams. So there are sometimes when I'm asleep and then ideas just come and next thing I wake up, I draw. I already know what I want to do. And then there are times when it is actually very difficult, times when my works actually challenge me. I do some particular works and it speaks to me in ways that I can't even explain. So times like that, I give the piece a particular period, say a year, before I go back to it. So there are times when my pieces challenge me, like when I'm doing something very personal. For example, when I had um, an atom done for my biological dad, it was really attacking because it just, just laid down questions that I couldn't answer personally. A scribble artist, uh, my own process is right. There's no direct path. It's usually in a scribbled form. Scribbled form is meaning it's a jaga jaga form. Because I'm seen as a jaga jaga artist, like I said. They see me as one person that just does nonsense, actually makes sense. So most times I twist and twirl before I actually make a point. Twist and twirl in the sense that um, I can decide to just get a sketchbook and then from a point I'm doing jargons all over, just doing jargons, not making any sense. And then it gets to a point where I actually realize what I am trying to do, the message I'm trying to pass across, and then I start building on that particular piece. So from that point, I'm already forming an image. I never finish an artwork. I never see it as a film, as a finished work. I feel like whenever I create an art piece, there's always going to be a continuation. And most times, it is when um, people get to like, buy the works off me that I call it finished because I no longer have it in my possession. But like sometimes I break down pieces into series because I can't finish one on a particular canvas. So I have to continue on another canvas. That is where I, um, that's why there's need for co collection or series when I'm working. So, for example, my Igbo landing works. Um, this one behind me here, um, 
it's actually a series, a five in one series. Jean Michel Basquiat actually indirectly influences my style. He's a new expressionist. Um, I also have interest in expressionism. I like his method and I feel like his approach towards creating um, has influenced me in so many ways because, like I said earlier, I basically just approach the canvas and I see drawing on the canvas as me learning. I see it as an opportunity to learn. So whenever I draw, whenever I scribble, it's more like I'm actually learning. So that is how it is for Basquiat. So whenever he approaches his canvas, just basically scribbles paint around. He scribbles paint around and while doing that, he figures out some things about what he's doing. So I think that's the same thing because I see art as a learning process. So he has impacted me in that form. Although Basquiat is dead, but yeah, I still look up to him a lot. Challenges I faced as an artist. Um, at first, it was acceptance. I was really chasing acceptance, and I realized that at the point when I started getting accepted, I started losing myself because I wasn't basically it felt like I was just doing works just to please people, just to please people's satisfactions. And around that time, I was doing that because um, I was doing I was doing um, realism works. I was drawing faces realistically and then I realized that I wanted something more and in the process I started doing my own thing. I started doing scribble art. So yeah at first it was acceptance, then there was the financial aspect. I mean it takes a lot to get art materials, it takes a lot to get a studio. I got the studio um, late last year with my friend Bio which I currently share with. Um, there's also uh, the old art scene in Nigeria, it's not so encouraging because I feel like um, they keep recycling old artists or dead artists and they are actually imagine artists doing so well. I have friends around that practice so well, they practice so hard, their works are, they act, the works actually speaks to me and speaks to a lot of people and I feel like there should be room for them to, but it's kind of not so easy because there's politics everywhere, there's politics in the art scene. My plans actually change over time because I'm human, I grow and I realize that sometimes I actually want stuff bigger and sometimes I want stuff a little more subtle, right? So um, currently I would like to actually have a hub where people like me wouldn't get the opportunity to create we didn't get the opportunity to study what they wanted to study, can actually come around and feel, and feel at home. Um, people, who, people who probably find themselves doing things they really don't want to do can actually come home and meet other people, network, create. So there's going to be an art school, there's going to be a dance school, basically a creative hub where people can come around and learn. So that is like my dream. I would like to own a hub where people can do that, expose new talents, encourage them and currently I've started doing that little by little with my NGO. It's called Charity with Arts. We go to the streets or we go to orphanages and then we teach kids how to draw. We don't only just feed them or give them clothes. We also teach them because if you like once you have your skill you already have you already have your weapon or you have your passports to the world, like to travel the world. So basically we just impact that knowledge and um, get them to practice more.